Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know what day it is? It is 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Also, that might be, you can't tell. I just, why did I just try to focus that by tapping my finger? It's early, it's 7 a.m. on a Sunday. It's not that early. Like, I think I said this in the last video. When I say like 7 a.m. on a Sunday, I'm not trying to make it seem like that's that early. Um, but yeah, that's probably the best wallpaper I've ever had. I've had that on for like a couple of years now. Peak show, Breaking Bad, top two of all time. Game of Thrones is number one. I think I'm gonna half scoop today. Uh, that's like three quarters, that's still good. Going with the, uh, the sour green apple again. But it's an early morning lift. And like I said, have an apple in the morning, it's just kinda nice. Dude, I gotta get the heat on right now. It's like actually cold. What's the temperature? 52. It feels cold. Um, what's a quote of the day? I'm gonna start doing a quote of the day. Cause I love quotes. Um, oh, dude, this one is sick. I've been writing down so many quotes lately. Like I've got to the point now where every time I hear a quote or I read something in a book or hear something in podcasts, I used to be like, oh, like I'll come back to it. My brain doesn't work like that. I won't come back to it. So now I've just started like pausing it, screenshotting it. Actually, this is like kind of, if you're really lazy and you're like really trying to like shortcut time, even though it probably takes longer, just screenshot. You know what? Actually, I don't know. I was going to say, never mind. It's not important at all. Um, all right. So quote of the day is, I'm not saying it's easy but it's much more fun failing at what makes you happy than living a life someone else created for you. Tell me that doesn't go hard. Tell me that doesn't get you thinking. I gotta make sure I don't hit Brett's car. He got a flat tire last night already, so the last thing I need to do is have him wake up to his car just mangled. But that quote is sick, and it is unbelievably true. Like, I have tried so many different things in my life. I see, is there not, anyone coming? Like, when I say so many, I just, guess I just mean like, I've tried so many different, uh, like paths, I guess, like college, military, being an electrician, uh, the fitness industry at one point, like I've, I guess that's not that many, but most people, it's just like high school, college, job. Right, and like I've worked other jobs, but that's not really the point. The point is, I have tried a number of things, none of which made me happy, none of which I actually wanted to do. I just took the safe or the realistic route because that was what that was what everyone else wanted, and that was what everyone else was doing. And I always knew that I was like, that's not what I want to do, but I'm scared to actually do what I want to do. Oh, what a beautiful sunrise! And so it got to the point where things started going so badly, especially like, mo well not especially, mental health wise, because I was starting to beat myself up so much about the fact that I wasn't doing what makes me happy. And I was literally, again, I was living a life that I didn't even want to live. I was living a life that pretty much other people were like, not even picking for me, but it was like, I was trying to do things that other people would accept and support instead of just doing what I wanted to do and I became incredibly unhappy pretty quickly and uh, now in the last two years yeah pretty much well I guess three now of like actually pursuing what I want to pursue I've failed and had just as many bumps in the road and hiccups and tough times but not once have I ever like like fully been like all right well, well honestly not once have I ever mentally gone back to that place where I was when I was living a life I didn't want to live like when I was living a life someone else was kind of picking for me and it's like no matter how big the failure is I won't care like that's why I talk so much about if you focus on enjoying the process 
and not like where it's going to get you, you're going to get a lot further than you would, right? I, that's the, actually the like very cheesy quote where it's like the guy who enjoys walking is going to walk further than the guy that enjoys the destination or whatever it is. Um, but it is very true. Like if you pursue what you love, what you're passionate about, when you fail, like you're not going to care. You're going to be like, oh, well, like, that, I had a lot of fun that whole time. Like, yeah, failure sucks, but you can learn from failure. Like, but I think in the past when I was living a life I didn't want to live and I failed, I didn't even care. I didn't want to learn from it because I was like, I don't care about this. This literally doesn't mean anything to me. Like, this is not the life I want to live. So why would I want to, like, learn more about this pursuit that brings me zero fulfillment, right? Like, there's no no intrinsic motivation to do that. Whereas now, like, with, like, I've actually learned that I actually really enjoy, like, business stuff. But also, in terms of social media, everything I'm doing right now, for the most part, uh, yeah, there's downsides, but I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy all the perks, like, and so now, when I fail, and I have before, instead of just being like, I don't know, letting that put me down and being in a shitty place, I'm like, okay, what can I learn from this so that when I keep going, because I'm going to keep going, like, this isn't the end, I can make sure that this doesn't happen again. And, uh, yeah, man, like, I, I learned kind of the hard way that it... it it's a terrible feeling to fail or not even to fail, but well, yeah, like I I know that a lot of people know that, but I pretty quickly learned the hard way that when you like live a life that doesn't bring you any sort of fulfillment, when you work a job or you're doing all these things that you didn't even decide for yourself, right? Like maybe you did decide, but at the end of the day, you're probably listening to everyone else's opinions or are probably listening to what everyone else says is a good idea and realistic and they probably want what's best for you to a certain extent, right? They want you to be safe financially. They want you to, right? They want you to be comfortable and happy and healthy, but it's like just because you have a safe job or you take a safe path, does not mean you're going to be happy. Like, trust me. And I'm not saying that, like, you should just go take the world's most massive risk ever. Like, no, it needs to be a well-thought-out thing. But I think a lot of people, it's really hard to not listen to all those other people and to not do what everyone else is doing. Because, again, like, I'm the only one of my friends that didn't go to college think like I have yeah I I don't think I know well no I have like maybe one but even he went to trade school um well actually my buddy was in the military but still like the overwhelming majority of my friends and the guys I went to high school with all went to college and when I decided to drop out that was like the hardest decision ever not just because I was like wow I feel really weird being the one guy to not go but also to like tell my dad, tell my parents. But like, I was so miserable, man, because I was like, this, this is not what I want to do. Like, this has nothing to do with who I am as a person or what I want to accomplish in life. And like, I think a lot of people feel that way, but making that decision to stop doing that is really hard. Like, I know how hard that can be to be in a situation that's, basically antagonizing who you are as a person but everyone else is like thrilled for you they're like yeah good job keep doing great it's like dude I'm not doing great like sure maybe just because like my grades are good or I'm on this safe path to maybe making a lot of money and yada 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 it's like that doesn't mean I'm doing good man like that just means I'm doing what everyone else is doing like that and a lot of people are very unhappy doing that But a lot of people, like I said, are stuck there. And I think once you take that initial risk, because it is a risk, 
but you take that like leap of faith. Why did this person, yo, he knows I'm behind him, right? Okay, that was scary. There's like an empty parking lot and he decided to like park right behind me. I thought he was about to back up right into me. Um, but anyways, I think once you take that initial like leap of faith and go against the grain essentially and actually pursue what you believe will make you happy because again, you don't know that it will make you happy. Like everything I did prior to this I just did it because I was like, maybe I will enjoy this. Like, I don't know, but I won't know if I don't try. And very quickly, I was like, okay, sweet. I can cross this off the list. This sucks. I know I don't want to do this, which is good because it's like you're just narrowing down your options. And also, too, the more things you do that you don't want to do, the more you start to realize like, okay, what's the one thing that I know I want to do, but I've just been avoiding because I'm afraid to fail at it. But again, once you do it, when you fail, because you will fail, you're going to realize like, oh, that didn't actually feel that bad. Like it felt better failing doing what I actually loved and what brought me a sense of fulfillment than it digs, than it did succeeding at something that was meaningless to me. Like that had no, like, like when I wake up now, I'm genuinely fired up for the day. Like I'm fired up to go to the gym fired up to do work, like I'm fired up to get better. And that's why I believe I'll be successful is because I actually am like excited to do the work. I'm excited for the failure. Like I'm excited to keep pushing, to keep getting better, to keep having failures, learn from them, grow from them. And I wouldn't have ever been successful. Like maybe I would have been somewhat successful at those other pursuits. Like if I went, if I had graduated with a degree in engineering and everything, but it's like, I wouldn't have had any intrinsic motivation to be successful, right? Because I didn't care. I was like, why would I put, and this is, I know that there's a bad mindset, but I was like, I am not going to want to every single day give my 110% into something that literally is meaningless to me, brings me no sense of fulfillment. And yeah, like, and that's why I believe if you do what you love, you'll be a lot more successful and happier, more fulfilled than if you pursue something that's just like a life someone else created for you. That's the quote of the day. It's 7 a.m. on a Sunday. I just yapped for a while. And honestly, I feel like sometimes I don't even know if any of it makes sense. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I gotta drink this pre. We're going to get in there. I'll tell you what, yesterday was 6 a.m. on a Saturday. And my lower back from those RDLs is like, even with good form, once you are like getting up to a certain weight, I feel like it is just gnarly on your lower back. So we're going to get in there today, though. And we're going to get after it. Dylan said he was going to come. I don't see him, though. 7 a.m. on a Sunday.
wanna go, then I'll be so lonely If you're leaving, baby, let me down slowly Let me down
I'll be honest with you. That that wasn't where that didn't go how I wanted it to. But uh, you know, I think I don't know if it was the last video I talked about this, but I talked about how if things aren't going the way people want them to go, or they're not seeing the progress that they want to be seeing, but then they keep doing the same thing. It's like why are you even complaining? Like nothing will change. If nothing changes and so I think once you start having too frequent of like bad lifts and when I say bad lifts I mean right maybe you're not as excited to it literally could be you're just not as excited as you should be to work out like right maybe you're getting sick of the exercises maybe you're getting and right if you've been doing the exercise for like two weeks that's not long enough but uh, you know, you could be getting sick of the exercises. You could be getting sick of the rep scheme. You could be, uh, let's see, like there, there's so many things that it could come down to that are causing your lifts to not be where they want or where you want them to be. And I don't think necessarily mine is so much uh, exercise selection. I mean, that's definitely probably part of it, to tell you the truth, because, I mean, I did travel a lot in like November, December, but even though I was traveling, anytime I went to different gyms, I still did the exact same movements just on different equipment. So like, yes, different equipment, but same movement. So I have been doing like pretty much the same stuff for a while now. Like it's been a, it's been a, yeah, it's been a minute since I really fully sat down and was like, okay, I'm rewriting my entire split. And so that's an option. Uh, the other thing is, to tell you the truth, I, I love lifting early in the sense that it does feel amazing to like get out and be like, sweet, I have the whole rest of the day to do what I want to do. And I know that not everyone has like 
the option to choose really when they work out because of work. But I, the last, not yesterday, yesterday's lift was incredible to tell you the truth. Um, the last two lifts before that, I went late. I went really, I went at like 11 at night because I was trying out some new gyms to see if I went at like weird hours, like midnight, if it would be really dead and be easier to film, which it wasn't. But I went super late. And mind you, I typically go to bed at like before 10. And so I was going and working out when I would normally be asleep and my lifts were exponentially better. Exponentially better. Like my push day the other day was, I think I might have said this, literally the best push day I have had in years, man. Years. And I think a big reason for that is the fact that training later in the day, I have so much more food, so many more calories, and just so much more energy in general that like, I think it might be beneficial for me too. Like I'm not saying to go to the gym at midnight, like that's not good for your sleep. But I think even if I started lifting at like 2 p.m. instead of 6 a.m., that could make a significant difference. Um, You know, just having like three or four meals in me versus one meal right before I work out. And I also too, I think my sleep quality could definitely be better than it has been recently, right? Part of that is also probably because I went to the gym so late those couple of nights. Uh, But... Again, that, that's not an excuse for me to go in there and have a bad workout. It's more just like I need to make a change to try and, you know, off-put whatever's going wrong. Um, so I think maybe that's what we're going to do, you know? Like, I think... Also, too, I think I just need to eat more. Seriously, like, my weight is... I weigh 181. That's... Like, I need to... I need to start honestly speeding up my weight gain a little bit. Like, I think now that I'm home in San Diego for good, like I don't have any travel plans. I've been here for three weeks. I can now start to like really look at the trends of my weight because before that was a little more sporadic from traveling, eating different foods. Um, But yeah, even too, like maybe it's been a while as well since I changed my food sources. Like I've been eating rice for a hot minute, man, right? It might be worth trying out some different sources. Honestly, dude, I think I might get back onto pasta today. Like, I miss pasta, to tell you the truth. Um, But yeah, like that, that, I was in there, and you guys could probably tell, like I kind of turned off the mic. Well, not even turned it off. I just never even really put it on. Because I just like, not even so much, yeah, I mean, I guess it was mental, but... I was just like genuinely frustrated. It is very, you should let it piss you off. Like if you're not feeling and performing and progressing the way you want to, like you have every right to be pissed off. Like that's, that is frustrating. If you care, then yeah, it should bother you. And so I think you need to like use that frustration in a productive manner right? And be like, okay, I don't want to feel that way. Like I have now had a few of those lifts too frequently in the last three weeks, which has been like, what, three, Uh, probably three lifts where I felt this way, which for me is a lot. Like I want to, I need, I I want to channel that frustration be like, okay, I do not ever want, I, I want to feel this way as little as possible as I can throughout the rest of this bulk and just lifting in general, especially a bulk though. Bulk though, you should feel you should feel good when you go to the gym. Like you should feel like you have so much energy, so much strength, your body should feel good, you should feel healthy. And I feel like lately I have not felt like physically good. I have not felt well, at least in the morning. I feel like I shouldn't be having to like, yeah, I don't know. I I think honestly, you know what? I'm just, I think I'm just being a little bitch is what it is. I need to start eating more, except the fact that we're going to get a little chunk, a little chunky, you know, that's, 
that's what you got to do. Like you, I, I literally preach to you guys that you have to be uncomfortable. No, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think lately, the second I start to see myself like getting a little chubby, and obviously my depiction of what chubby is is very different than normal world, but still, I think I have like held myself back a little bit from my progress because I'm like too focused on how I look and not focused enough on how I'm progressing. And, and that, to be fair, it's hard with social media, man. It is tough to like, like I don't even really like posting how I look even when I'm shredded, like what I would consider to be like my peak physique. And so it's even harder to post pictures and post on social media when it's like, dude, I literally look like the Michelin man. Like, and that's, that's one of those things where it's like, I'm just gonna, I have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And, uh, starting today, bro, I'm eating 4,000 calories today. I'm serious. Like I've been eating what, what was my last full day eating? 3,800. Um, I guess 4,000 isn't that much, but I think today I'm sitting down. I'm like, I'm resetting clean slate. Um, I'm going to start a new meal plan, start drafting a new split because honestly too, dude, like I, at least right now, push pull legs is hard for me. Like it, it is not so much the legs. I think I'll always, even this summer when I did bro split on a cut or not technically bro split, but I was doing like, what was I doing? I was doing, I'm trying to think of like my split this summer. Anyways, I was doing basically a bro split, but I would hit legs twice a week because I, I don't know how people can hit quads, glutes, hamstrings, adductors, calves, like all in one day. I do not have not only energy, but I just like, I mean, yeah, the energy, dude, if I do leg extensions and then go and do pendulum squats, I'm like already fatigued to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to be able to put out on like hamstrings at like my maximum capability. So I'd rather just do them on a different day. But I think it might be, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to start messing around, writing up some splits and then I think maybe the next video will be, I'll like try and go over my new split, but also too, like it has been a long time, dude, since I like really changed up drastically my exercises, especially for things like chest and back, I guess. I've been doing like, for the most part, you know, incline dumbbell press, T-bar rows, uh, high to low cable flies. So I think it's time for a, uh, I'm going to switch things up and just time to, time to stop being a little bitch. Time to, like, honestly, today was like the last straw, truly. Like, I, I was just in there and I was like, dude, I am so sick of coming in here and not feeling like the best version of myself that I can be. And so it's like, I know that it's up to me and it's in my control how I feel when I go to the gym on a daily basis. And so instead of just like, doing what I'm doing over and over and over and just expecting every single lift to go really well, I need to be like, okay, why is it that I'm frequently having a lift where I don't feel how I should, right? Figure out the problem, change it. So that's what we're going to do. It's a clean slate, which honestly kind of works out too, because to tell you the truth, I'll have to like try and go back and figure out when I really was like, okay, I'm starting the bulk. Because again, last summer, I feel like I said a lot of times, I was like, all right, I'm starting the bulk. And then I just didn't. Because again, I was not ready to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I didn't want to. I still am like, you know, in that process. But on the bright side, what's today? The 28th? Yeah. So like that kind of works. You know, maybe we'll start out February on a new, new, yeah, new meal plan, new program, um, as well too, I think, I think I need to start setting more milestones, right? Like I need to, right? The end goal for the end of the bulk is to get to like 210 pounds. I need to break that down into like, okay, here's my monthly goal. 
here's my my weekly goal, my daily goal, my daily habits. And again, I'm very, very already like pretty meticulous on daily goals. But I haven't fully like broken down the entire year and set new like or I guess benchmarks along the way, which is very helpful to do. You have to take that big goal, break it down into the monthly goals or quarterly goals and then break those down into like weekly goals then go even deeper and just break it down into daily habits right the daily habits are like get eight hours of sleep uh get ten thousand steps you know um log book your workouts eat six meals a day track every macro like all that stuff those are the daily habits or if you do those every single day do those over the course of a month then months add up those quarters add up, boom, next thing you know, it's like, well, I'm 210 pounds. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Reset. Dude, maybe, maybe, don't quote me on this, maybe I will start barbell benching. But the last time I did that, it still like really bothered my left shoulder. I have honestly barbell benched probably less than less than three times in the last four years now. And one of them was literally, when I was being trained to be a personal trainer, they were teaching us like the proper bench form. And me and uh, the other guy that I was training with, we both just were like, hey, like wanna see what we can get. And I actually like, no warm up or anything, we like worked up to, I think I maxed at 275, which that was when I weighed like also, I think 190. but. I benched probably three months ago now, something like that. I just did it one day and I actually couldn't even get 225. Like no, no joke. I, I literally got 185 for like four. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe we'll start doing that. We'll see. Start trying to mess around these next few days and see what feels good. Um, but yeah, make a change, progress. You know, if the change doesn't work, Make another change. Just got to figure it out, trial and error, find what works. So that's what we're going to do. I'm about to go eat today is what I'm going to do. If I don't wake up, actually, no, I don't really care what I wake up at. As long as I eat enough, you know? No more being a little bitch. <laughs>